You're listening to Deborah Wine Radio. It's a DJ and a winemaker yakking about music and wine. Presented by Bonaquisti Wine Company. And now here's Cha and Polly. Hey everybody, welcome to Denver Wine Radio. Hey, we've got it's a very special night here in the winery. Yeah? Yeah, I've got Cha Cha here. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Paul. I wasn't yeah, expecting welcome. that, but... Yeah, but we have a house full of winemakers uh, from uh, around Colorado. Right on. And so uh, we're going to try to talk to every one of them tonight. And you know what they say about winemakers? What do they say about winemakers? They make great wine. Oh, good. I yeah, think. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> I guess so. Hey, but anyway, our, uh, our special guest uh, right now is Steve Flynn from Vino Salida. Did I get that right? You got it right. We we call it Vino oh, Salida. Oh, do you say Vino Salida? Yeah. That was going to be my next say question. Say Vino Salida. So okay, well, 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 so, well, we want to yeah. be proper here because yeah. uh, you know, like here in North Denver, we call this the North Side, and I'm not going to let you call it uh, something different, right? <laughs> How's right. that? So let's go with Vino Salida. 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 Yeah, it's the same in Spanish as it is in Italian. So, True. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, so uh, tell us about Vino Salida, man. You've been around a while. Yeah, been around a while. Oh, well, officially 10 years. Um, but, uh, you know, I started uh, working for Mountain Spirit Winery in Salida, you know, for four years. So they're oh, winery yeah. number 15 in the state. Are and they really? So I know they've been around a long time. I didn't realize they were long fi- time. The 15. doctor and his wife started the winery in 1995. And um, I didn't start working t- for them till 2002. That was my first harvest, and, and I haven't missed one since. So, But uh, working with them, I got inspired by the local winemakers. There's like 70 to 80 local winemakers in Salida. You know, all wow. Italian. You yeah. Know, the Italians came for the railroads and the mines, right? Yeah, definitely. So um, all had their bubbling batches in the cellars, making their supersetta and all the different <laughs> kinds of stuff they used to make that it, they don't anymore, you know, so... Um, so I learned a lot from the locals as well. So I started foot stomping myself with friends in the backyard in 2004. And so we've been, I've been collecting barrels and, and uh, wine drinker since. So, so that one barrel led to, uh, you know, quite a full, right. full winery up there. And we're in Poncha Springs now. So oh, are you really? Yeah, right at the crossroads where 50 and 285 okay. meet. We had a winery built for us right there. Been there for over four years and uh, have a kind of similar experience as you, you know, wine bar, food, uh, just tying that the Italian uh, experience of wine um, coming to the table. And it's not it's not anything that should be, you know, you know, uh, you know, treated like a drug and it's just food. So that's my exactly. philosophy. So <laughs> and the Italian, true Italian is sourced as local as possible. So, right. you know, just really being inspired you know and then inspired by you know what you've done for 13 years you know that it's the same same vein you know the balustraries and sparrow and bonacuesti you know the italian way is the best way come on always (laughs) so that's my inspiration so so when before you started uh working at the winery your first winery did you know anything about wine or is that where the bug kind of hit you or that's where the bug hit me i mean i started experimenting and I, i was geeky in um in uh, high school, I started making wine in my closet in high school. Okay. So, you know, I had little <laughs> batches going. But I was always a cook, and my background's art as well. So I went to okay. art school. So I was always cooking and doing art since I was a little kid. You know, our chores in, in school, our, our parents worked weird hours. We had to have food ready when they got home. So, so it's, it's always been in my blood. So you started working at the winery and just started to learn and I read just every said, book I got to do had. this myself. Yeah. And wow. yeah, I started making a bunch of carboys for myself, picking dandelions, getting fruit wine, fruit in from uh-huh. Peonia and Palisade and yeah. And then, and then grapes eventually. So nice. Yeah. That's good, man. And you do a lot of different wines. We do. You, yeah. You, you've expand. I mean, you've just grown over the years and you're doing so. So tell me about some. I know you're doing. Do you do some mead as well? We do mead. Yeah. 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 When we first opened the winery in 2009, um, it was a great harvest, you know, but uh, 2010, we started having all those cold events. In 2010, I could only source enough for my foot stomping because um, I haven't quit doing the foot stomping. We're having our 17th annual this year or something like that. Oh, so wow. I'm losing count. And, uh, so it's totally the Lucy and Ethel when you say foot stomping. It is. Totally. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we make wine out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like Balistrari, but we actually let adults in, too. Okay. 
So. Yeah, balustrades only do the, they let the kids do it. The oh. little, the little the feet. The little oh, feet. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So. But um, uh, uh, what was the question again? Well, uh, mead, we were talking yeah, about. Mead, uh, yeah. little mead and some of the other uh, products that you make. So no. Right. Well, mead, actually, we had a fourth generation um, beekeeper move to town. She was only two doors down. We were kind of similar to this, but actually a way junk here. This is real classy strip, <laughs> strip place here. Yes, but, it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, ours was, you know, pretty, pretty mechanic and doggy daycare. And, <laughs> and then, but we had a uh, meat, uh, you know, honey production move in two doors down and a young gal, Jamie Johnston. And, and it's, she brought in all this lo- raw local honey, alfalfa clover. And I was like, okay, well, 2010, we could only source, you know, just about three tons, which isn't much to make a business out of. So I'm like, okay, well, how about making mead? So we, we've started making mead and haven't quit, quit that either. Mm. So, you know, that's how we brought that into the portfolio. And yeah. we just kept adding stuff as we found what people wanted, you know. Um, you know, if we specialized in one thing, if we grew it, Pinot Noir, we'd make like seven kinds of Pinot. But we have people waving their credit card and you know, they're like, well, if you make sweet wine, we'll, you know, we'll buy it. So, yeah. you know, if we started doing a... You know, from sweet to semi-sweet, off dry, really dry. Um, my passion is dry reds in barrels. So uh, staying with my passions is important, too. But I like I like doing styles like breweries do. Right. You know, a good Pilsner style or, you know, um, a stout or a porter. Or, you know, so we have that in wine as well. So it's nice to bring that to the table. And a lot of people don't know those styles. So, and uh, Colorado offers a lot. So... Being innovative or revolutionary, as we've been called in some articles, revolutionary. So um, um, I started to think what other kind of products would be different. So we do sangria as well, which really we were just doing for parties and for festivals. And there are people like, well, if you bottle that mm-hmm. then, or, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we'll. And are you are you exclusively using uh, just Colorado grapes? Or are you? We are. Oh, yeah, we, we were able to do that as of 2016, uh, oh, 2015. Nice. We could have. We were locked into some contracts, but it was it was just we, we couldn't predict it from year to year. Right. So we brought in we were always bringing in some Zinfandel and Sangiovese for our local Italian. Yeah. But um. But now we bring in all Colorado, and including the cold, hardy varieties, uh, for when there are more cold events, we're ready because we've already put them into blends. So, um, so we're trying to work with growers and not just get what's fi- what's popular. Mm-hmm. You know, Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, that's the most sold grape in Colorado, and everybody knows it. There's a reason for for that. But you know, yeah. I think Cabernet Franc does better, so I'll do more of that. And then I'll make Sweet Cab Franc all the way to dry Cab Franc wow. and everything in between because I know I can get that same thing with Riesling and that way I can always buy Colorado. That's, that's very important. cool. Yeah. All right. So you, well, you brought wine tonight and we want to, we want to taste them. All right. All right. Well, so what do you I got su- for us first? Well, I have a barrel fermented Chardonnay. Okay. And it's my favorite style of Chardonnay. Oh, ladies first. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Cha-cha. Sorry to so get bad. my hand way out there in front go. of you there. Do a Paul poly pour here. That's beautiful right there. Mm, <laughs> smells good. All right. Yeah, it smells delicious. So um, a blend mm. of two, two different vintages, and I just found that they blended well together, and I wanted a bigger batch. And yeah. um, one batch was um, fermented on new oak, and the other batch was fermented on second-year oak, so pretty wow. pretty new. And Yeah, so tell people about uh, barrel fermenting. Uh, you know what that what that entails well uh barrel fermenting um is actually one of my favorite styles because it's super super um super easy and fun um uh for chardonnay uh the barrel fermenting um like it would be for other whites is uh we just crush the the fresh grapes press them so we have grape juice Mm -hmm. um and then um then we pump them to barrels. So um, the, in this case, we use all American oak um, from uh, uh, Lebanon, Kentucky, so bourbon country, and um, as local as possible is our goal. So it's a little bit of a sweeter oak than French oak or anything like that. Um, but um, but it really kind of, those barrels are charred, and they're not charred, like they're toasted, dark toasted inside. So yeah. um, it just, that fermentation just just bubbles all that flavor together and you definitely don't want to try it right away i mean as a winemaker i do but a customer you know you're going to need to let that sit about six months 
minimum. But I let this sit. This was crazy about two and a half years. So oh, wow. we, so um, the 17 wasn't in that long, but it was blended together and then um, and then aged longer in those same oak barrels. You can really smell that, huh? Yeah, you can. You can. You can smell the oak, but big time. But it's but so when you taste it, there's so much fruit. Exactly, it, it balances smooth. out really nice. It doesn't come. It's, it's not over oaked or no. Yeah, not at all. really it's nice real flavor. Smooth. Thank you. Well, with the oak as well to differentiate myself from the other winery I worked at, they That's use. Good. St- uh, second year oak so it's actually looser grained it's still tight grain oak but it's only aged for two years in the cooper's yard we use extra fine grain which is of course more expensive but doesn't penetrate the wood as as much mm. and you get a lot more subtle flavor so it's not a, like a mouthful of um of wood or mm. or smoke or anything right. like that right. so um so I, I chose to do that right at the beginning so we had a, a little bit of a difference of taste locally as well very cool. It's very good. Thank you. It's very tasty. This is my style. I like it's, I like it's, style. Well, it's yeah. crisp too. Very crisp. Very light. Yeah, and that's that's I, the fruit. It's very fruity. And I love how you say it's your style because, so for Chardonnay, I I I made a couple of barrel fermented shards yeah. years ago, but then, um, my customer base doesn't go for them for whatever oh, reason. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, so it's so no oak. I've always done, whenever right. I do Chardonnay, it's all stainless steel. It's interesting. There yeah. used to be so many barrel fermented Chardonnays, and people were screaming for the no oak, which you're still experiencing. Um, yeah. And around us, uh, our customers are like, oh, we haven't had oak forever because you can't find those anymore. But it's not like the in-your-face oak like some of the 80 Chardonnays were that yeah. they remember. So That's really good. I like that. Thank you. Very tasty. All right. So uh, what's next? Oh, and then, so what does that uh, retail for? Um, uh, both of these wines retail for $25. Oh, very cool. Yeah. <coughs> nice. Yeah, we have a, we're wine club supported winery, so our wine club can access that. Um, and, and so this, this is our uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. It's non-vintage as well. Um, it's a blend of 2015 and 16 Cabernet nice. Sauvignon. And we have a barrel trading program. Um, with uh, Deer Hammer Distillery in Buena Vista. And we shipped up some of our red wine barrels that had uh, some Syrah in them. And uh, um, they finished some brandy in those barrels. And I, th- I believe they actually got the, the wine from uh, Julie Balistrieri over there. And they made some brandy with them and aged them for a long time and finished them in those barrels. We brought them back and then... Um, um, aged for six months in those barrels, uh, the blend of those two vintages. So, wow. So we didn't want um, to overpower the wine as well. So yeah, and it's um, wow. it does it's not oh yeah it's not overpowered at all. It's uh it's really nice. Uh, bourbon barrels can can overpower uh, red wines, which actually I like, but um, being a Cabernet Sauvignon, it's it's just so harshly. By judges, and I, I'm want to enter. I'm entering this one in the Governor's Cup, so I was like, I wanted to make it more subtle. Yeah. So not a lot of new oak good. either. I think he, I, I pick up the like the kind of the hint of the of the the bourbon barrel. Yep. Um, that sweetness and the smell, but um, but definitely not uh, overpowering. Mm-mm, not and, at all. And flavor wise, it's real it's nice. Very Just good. Uh, there's uh, some subtle tannin. Yeah to it and uh very fruit. smooth very yeah good fruit i at first it was like cherries yeah. just cherries like yeah. right off the bat it yep. was like whoa this is so good which is classic mm. cabernet so it's nice to yeah. keep that in there yeah really nice thank you yeah i like very, it a lot very good that's very good well and this is crazy aged in barrels as well we bottled this last week so august of 2019 so this has 2015 and 2016 vintages in so you know, the 15 was in for, you know, a good solid three years, barrels, uh, three years plus, so, which is kind of crazy long. That's crazy. You have to <laughs> yeah, watch yeah. your barrels very close. <laughs> we top every month to two months, so uh, we watch it very close. Ah, very cool. What do you think? You like bourbon barrel oh, chalk? this is really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, you can definitely taste it a little bit of the, the, the bourbon-y kind of, mm-hmm. but it's not like... It isn't, it's not the first thing that hits you. Well, and it is brandy. Yeah. It's not bourbon. Oh, not bourbon. I mean, brandy. So, brandy. so it's all okay. great oh, okay. product, okay. which is exciting. 
you know, wow. that some of that influence came from a local winery here in Denver. Yeah. It's just re- really that's, amazing. That is. That's and Deer cool. Hammer does that's a, really a lot, uh, some great um, expressions up there as well. So, and, and their brandy, which doesn't sell well. A lot of people don't know brandy. They know whiskey. Right. Yeah. And even gin gets in the way of their sales, they say. Yeah. It's just whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. So to have something different, their brandy is just, yeah. it's off the charts. So if you enjoy that product. Yeah. So. That's really good. Very, Thank you. very good. This is what you're going to enter? You enter this one? This is one of them. We're entering the Chardonnay as well. And then our, um, um, our mead. And we're doing um, our Vino Rosso di Salida. That was a blend. But... Uh, uh, also, our um, Rosso Vermouth. So that is one of our revolutionary products that we do as well. So, oh, they're all very taste, tasty. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. I got a car. Right there. It's very, very good. Sounds like Thank you're you. all liquored up yeah, already I'm over already there. Already liquored up. Dang it. <laughs> well, right on, Steve. For those of us who don't know where Salida is, <laughs> how would you get there from Denver? Oh, that's super easy. Just uh, hop on 285, head into the mountains. And um, you keep you go um, if you're on the the west side um, from C470, you hop on 285 or wherever. Right from that junction, it takes just over two hours. Okay. And then you go south until you hit the winery where Highway 50 intersects it in Poncha Springs. Okay. So nice. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming well, out. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Steve. Nice, nice. Make, yeah, I know you're ma- you've been making great wine for a long time. And thanks, I'm Paul. Just glad to have you here today. So. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's yeah, great man. to reconnect. Hey, well, good luck and, uh, hey, and salute. salute. There you go.